Funshine. What? Hey. There's an urgent message I need you to send to the mayor. Do this quickly or I will kill you. What? No, I can't. I don't have a horse. There's a pig right there. You can do it. Okay. Where's the message? In that mailbox right there. Send it now or you will die. Oh my goodness, guys. I've been given a task. I, I'm not sure what to do. Um, he said it was in this mailbox. Uh, it says a printout. It says it's very urgent. Um, I wish I had a horse, but this is going to have to do. Come on, piggy. Come on, piggy. Let's go. Come on, pig. Come on, pig. You can do it. Come on, pig. Come on, pig. Come on. No! Oh, my poor pig. You've let me down. Hello, guys. Funshine X here. This is a Computercraft tutorial of some sorts. Um, Computercraft 1.4.2 was just released a beta, and uh, Dan200 was nice enough to allow me to get my hands on it. It is a private beta, so you can't go out and download it yet, but it will be out very soon. We're just uh, looking for some last minute... Really? Now you move? Looking for some last minute bugs to make sure everything works. Um, there was not a ton of features added. This is more uh, a port to Minecraft 1.3.2 to make sure everything works. Because as you know, Minecraft is no longer single player versus multiplayer. It's all kind of a server uh, and, uh, running at one time. So uh, we need uh, Dan to wanted to make sure that this worked uh, flawlessly in 1.3.2 before we released it. And he also wanted to give us a few new features just so uh, encourage us to download it and upgrade. So uh, that's what I'm going to be covering today. Um, so the first thing you saw was the printout, and that's one of the new features that we're going to show. Um, pig, sorry, you've served your purpose. Oh no, now I just deleted. Let me get F1 here. There we go. Okay, so we're going to need a new uh, printer here. And that's this block there. Okay, so. Um, what do we have? Well, we still have the same computer and the same disk drive, and we have this new printer block. And if we look how this one is made, uh, it's very easy to make, just like the rest of the printers. It's a bunch of stone surrounded by redstone for the processing, and now this one uses ink. Um, this is black ink to make it, but once you, uh, once you actually make the printer, you can actually print in any color uh, of the dies. So I've now plopped that down there, and it behaves just like a peripheral. Um, let me turn NEI off here. It doesn't play very nice both screens open. Okay, uh, let's exit here. <laughs> oh, we never got to read the, the message. Mr. Mayor, your town is about to get attacked by turtles unless you send me one million diamonds. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the output that you can produce with the printer. Uh, it's just paper with uh, text on it in any color of the Minecraft colors, all the dyes. That's going to bug me not having that there. Give me one sec to fix it. Okay. And... Do, 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 do. Nope, don't want to do that. All fixed. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is see what kind of, uh, as I've done in all my tutorials before, is show you the API, how you can access the printer, and what you can do with it. The easiest way is if you're just editing a program, and you say, um, and you could write some code in here, or, you know, anything. Um, something like that, right? Normally you would then be able to save or exit, but now there's an additional function here called print, and this can actually print anything. And it's going to tell us we're out of ink. Please refill. Okay, well, let's go over here, and we need to get some ink. So if we look under miscellaneous, actually it's under, uh, what is it under? Materials, there we go. I'm still not used to the uh, new creative interface here. But let's put some ink in there. Sounds good. And let's try that again. Printer out of paper, please refill. Okay. Paper, I think, is a miscellaneous. It is. Let's get it. Let's give me a bunch of it, please. Thank you. Okay, and you see as soon as we put that paper in there, the printer realized, okay, I'm ready to print, and it printed this out. 
it titled it my program because that's what we called the program that we were printing and if you see it printed out the code and it formats it nice it does word wrapping and everything if it's multiple pages it will actually print out multiple outputs here uh, so really you can only print out six pages at a time at that point it'll just kind of jam until you remove pages and then it will keep printing printing more and uh, you can see that if we change this to like red oops that didn't work yeah. And we try printing it again. Printed one page. Let's grab it out of here. And it is in red. So you can print multiple colors. Um, so let's do that. And then let's exit this. So oh, so that's how I printed the uh, the the one for the Pony Express there, the Pig Express is I didn't really edit code, I just typed in here. And then just printed it, right? So you can print anything really easy on a printer. You don't actually have to write code to make uh, to print out stuff, okay? So um, that could make uh, computer craft useful for someone that has no use for writing code, that doesn't want to use turtles or anything like that. Well, they can now print pages and send them back and forth. I mean, if you have the forestry mod, you can use the mailbox to send these papers back and forth, uh, which would be really cool. And these are a lot easier than writing in Minecraft books. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you guys have tried that, but that's not easy to format these things at all. And once you screw up, yeah, it's just very difficult. You can't, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's the first use. The next use, well, let's actually do some code. That's what we're here for, right? So let me exit this, and I'm going to make a new program called Print. Now it's called Printer. And I'm going to turn the Minecraft music off here. Okay. Now the first, what I was going to tell you is the different um, API calls that we can do is the way I always start out. So um, let's see, we'll call them methods, and we just call peripheral because the distri or the printer is a peripheral, uh, and we can call get methods. And our printer right now is on the left side, and then this is a standard little function I always use to print out that get, the methods would now be a table we can't just print a table directly so we'll do this let me just get this typed real quick v and okay so that's going to get all the methods of the peripheral on the left and then print each one on its own line Okay, so here's the list. We have the write command that writes any text to the page at the current cursor position. Um, so you can then say, okay, well, we need to set, be able to set the cursor position then. So obviously you've got number two there. You can set the cursor position to any location on the screen. Uh, you can also get the current cursor position, which helps to know um, kind of how wide it was. Because if you do write and say like, hello, that's six characters long and the cursor will be at the end of that word. So you could you know know how it'd be make it easier for formatting basically. Um, get page size. So if you use set cursor position and you use something too big for the extra Y, uh, it won't print out. Um, that you know you, you won't see the text because it'll be off the page. So you might want to get page size. Um, we'll run that one to see a default page size. And then the other ones are for new page and end page. You always have to call new page before you call write. Uh, if you don't, it'll give you an error saying the page is not initialized or something like that. Um, so we always start with a new page. If you call new page and then you call new page again, um, that will set, that basically tells the printer, I'm done writing with that page. Go ahead and output it as, as one of these bottom slots here. Okay. Um, end page is also very similar, but it ends the page without starting a new one. Um, the printer is really cool because you can say new page, print some words to it, go away for a while, come back, print some more to it, go away, come back, print some more, and then it doesn't actually print the page until you call end page or new page. All right, there's the seventh one is the get the ink level. So basically, that returns how many items are in this slot. That works whether you have ink in here or not. I mean, if you do this and call ink level, it'll say one. So 
Um, I know that's a request that people have in a Danto owner to only allow inks to be put into the slot. Um, that would be really nice for when you're using like Buildcraft or Red Power to pipe in pipes, uh, pipe in inks to the slot that you don't get junk in there. Um, but yeah, so we can see if how much ink is left. Um, it takes one ink per page. Um, set the page title. So even though we called this one my program, we could have called set the page title and then we called something else. And get the paper level just returns the number of pages in these six slots. Since it's stacks, you could have 64 times six papers in there. Um, you can rewrite on old papers, um, but these don't slack, so you could only have six of those in there. And that will just write right over the top of whatever's there. It won't clear it. Um, the only way to clear it is to be to, to like print out a bunch of space characters in white. Um, so I don't know if you want to write your own program called Clear Page that writes a bunch of space characters with, with white text or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so you could actually have a multicolor page, I think. We're going to test that out live and figure out if that works. Uh, but yeah, you can just keep rewriting to the same page if you want to. Okay. And then yeah, get page level. So we've covered all the functions. Let's go actually and use some of these. Okay, so what I'd like to do first is um, comment all of this out just for a little bit here. Oops. And then let's um, wrap the peripheral. And this is the same way you do it for any peripheral, for a modem, for a turtle, for a disk drive, anything like that, a monitor, that kind of thing. So printer equals peripheral dot wrap left side. Okay, now the printer object has, it can call any of those methods that we just printed out before. So let's try printer dot write. Hello world. and save that and run it. And it gives us an error. Page is not started. Okay. And I expected that to happen. I just wanted to show you guys what happens if you don't call printer.newPage. Oops. Page not started. What? Hold on, let me figure out what's wrong. Okay, I believe that failed because we had no paper in here. So we might want to call that um, get paper level before we do a new page. Otherwise, we'll get an error. Um, I'm going to ask Dan200 about that. Maybe just return false instead of uh, exiting the program. Um, so then we could do something like if printer not new page, you know, if that worked. Maybe it does return false. Let's try that. out. Hey, cool. And put it in. Yeah, you can see now it, this little thing is on, and that means it's currently writing a page, but we haven't called end page yet, so it, it hasn't finished writing it. So, that actually works. I, I, good, good job, Tantu. And you, you, wanted, you put in exactly what I would have asked you for. So, printed on new page returns false if there's no paper in there. We can safely assume that works. Okay, so um, we're going to call new page. We're going to print hello world. And then we're going to do printer.end page. And do we get paper? Oh, we got two. <laughs> Remember, because we called printer.new page and there was already one in, in process. So that one finished, started in another one, and then we ended that one. We got Hello World there, and this one, Hello World there. Okay. The next thing we want to look at is printing multiple lines. So if I just do this, and let's see what 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 effect that has. I'm just adding on. Is it going to do a new line? Is it going to append? What's it going to do? Got our paper here. 
and I can see that it just appends text onto wherever it finished. Um, I do want to show you this this cool little graphic. When there's paper in the top slot, you get that little white. When there's paper in the bottom slot, you get that little paper down the paper tray. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so if we wanted to print on another line, we would need to go in here and say printer dot set cursor position, and the x is first. So we want to say, let's let's do three for the x position and three for the y position. And we can see on this one now it moved down to the third x and the second y, so it's printed it down here. This is not possible in Minecraft books editing because you can't leave blank lines, you can't format it nicely. Um, you can see here I did that in just a few lines of code. So already it's cooler than the Minecraft books. Um, the next thing we want to check out on these printers is um, let's actually write a bunch of pages. So let's come back up. We can delete all the, well, we can actually make use of it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to keep this in here, but I'm going to delete all this. Oops, not all of that. Okay, um, so we're not going to write any of this anymore. And say for k comma b in pairs of methods printer dot write k comma v. So let's actually put some space in there. All right, let's see what we got for that. Whoa, okay. So that just depended on. That's not good. So every time, let's store. Um, there's one. Uh, one comma i, we'll print it, and then we'll say i equals i plus one. Now we get a nice formatted list of all the methods. And you could do that with any table. I just had an access to a nice table there, getting the methods. Okay, so the next thing we were going to do is we were going to see if we could write in multiple colors. So I'm going to take off um, end page here. And I'm going to, let's just write this once. You can see it started printing but didn't finish, so let's take off red and add black. Okay, so I'll, the second time through, I'm going to take off the new page, so it just keeps printing on the same page, and we're going to do, set the cursor position to like five or four, <laughs> and see if we can write in black. Okay, that's still printed in black. Now let's get a... Uh, what other colors we got? How about some cyan? And obviously you wouldn't do this, like keep changing the program every time. This is more just to test. Um, so this one we're going to do, set the cursor position, let's do seven. And then at the end of this one, I want to do printer dot end page. I'll right, see what we got. This is going to be interesting. Should be a mix of red, black, and blue. Oh, darn it. All right. 
Well, apparently it only works with the first color you put in. Um, as soon as it starts printing, it extracts the ink and then uses that ink every for the entire page. You can see it didn't use our cyan or our black. Well, all right. Well, that would have been cool to write multiple colors, but you did see that you can write it wrote the first time and then it over overwrote it all the second time and then overall over overwrote it all the third time. So you can do that. Okay, let's do the next one. We can now get rid of this and pretty much all of this. Okay, let's um get page sevens. I actually don't need to do a new page or an end page on that one. Because we're just gonna print it out. So nice of the editor now. It works with home, insert, and delete, all that kind of stuff. Page down, page up. Oh, I guess you do have to get a new page. Okay, that works. Twenty-seven, twenty-one. So what that means is basically there's 2,721 characters, and because this printer word wraps, um, you know, as you write something on it, this curved position, it would say how much size is left, I guess. Let's try that. So let's do um, do a new page. Uh, get the page size that we're going to print. There we go. Printer dot right. One, two, three, four, five. And see if that says five less. It doesn't. Okay. So that just means the total number of characters. Not sure how helpful that is, because it doesn't tell us how many columns, how many rows, or how many characters left we have from the current position to know if we need to do a new page. I'll ask Dan 200 on that one how he intends that to be used, because I, I'd guess paper is always the same size, right? <laughs> so that's always going to return 2721. Um, if we do something, Let's uh, new page. I can take off this get page size stuff. Printer dot write. This is some really long text, and it okay. And then x comma y equals printer dot get. what that does. Okay, so it's telling us Oops, is that the one we just printed? <laughs> I'm losing which one? Yeah. I don't know where's the the one I just printed. Let's let's try it again. Let's put it here in the four slot. Oh, it doesn't word wrap. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to request Dan to write um, the get page size return an X and a Y. Or a, a cursor, a columns and a, and a rows. Uh, we could try that. Oops. just to see what this returns. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's why trial and error is awesome, guys, right? We're working on this without a wiki. It is beta, so we're finding the stuff out as we go. But this 
does, it was concatenating it is what was happening. Um, so it's 27 columns, 21 rows. So we will need to know if we try and write text that's greater than 27, we're going to have to wrap it ourselves. And uh, for 21 rows, then we need to know we uh, need to do a new page, and the current page, and do a new page. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Dan 200, you're off the hook. Again. Okay, and the other thing we wanted to do was uh, test the Git paper. Uh, let me just do this instead of changing it to day every time. There, that works. Let's do... Printer dot um, get ink level and printer dot get paper level. It's telling us there's 50, 50 inks, 49 pages. Cool. What if we do two of those? Thirty-one inks, fifty pages. That looks right to me. Cool. And that's pretty much it um, as far as printers go, guys. Um, the other thing that was added is multicolored disks. So if you use a lot of disk, or um, maybe you guys on your server have a bunch of disks, sometimes it's hard to scroll through them all to find the ones, especially if people didn't label them, to find the one you want. Uh, well, now all you have to do is take that bl blue disk that you start with and just add an ink to it and it'll color it for you. Um, what I wanted to do is get a, another blue one here. Throw it in here. Oh, you see where you're using a pink one. No, blue one, please. And uh, label set left disk blue. It's set to blue disk. I want to test that after we dye it, does it retain its label and all the programs on it? It does. Cool. So now it's a red disk. It says it's a blue disk, but it's a red disk. And any program that was on it is going to be maintained. So just go ahead and take all your disks, dye them each a different color, and then it'd be easier to know, okay, my turtle programs are on the pink disk or something like that. Um, other than that, the only really other update is that it works on 1.3.2. And again, this is in beta. This is the first release of beta, so we'll probably have a couple iterations to get through all the bugs, and then it'll be public. Um, look for the ComputerCraft forums for the release, and uh, I'll bring you another video if we add any new features at that point. This has been FunshineX with ComputerCraft 1.4.2. I will see you guys next time. Bye.